Hey everyone, welcome to Speedway Motors Tech Talk. I'm Joe and today Zach and I are gonna assemble one of our bolt-on nine inch Ford disc brake kits. And, and this kit is pretty universal as far as nine inch Fords go, right? Yeah, it is universal. I mean, it's got rotors with a five on four and three quarter or five on four and a half inch bolt pattern. So it'll work on Chevy or Ford wheels. Mm -hmm. um, it'll work on eight inch Ford rear ends, small bearing nine inch, big bearing nine inch, you know, old and new style. So pretty much right. any nine inch Ford it'll work on. And you'll see when we start putting it together, there's a lot of different sort of spacers and, and bolt patterns in the brackets that, that enable it to be so universal. And because of that, there are a few little tricks that you have to pay attention to when you put it together. So we're gonna walk through it today. So the first step to assembling this brake kit is to get the axle shaft installed in there. So we're gonna take this bearing and, and retainer off of here. Uh, this retainer isn't gonna be used in this particular case just because it's so thick uh, the T-bolts uh, aren't long enough to clamp both of these down at the same time on our, on our bracket here. And, and your application may be different. If you're starting with a housing that's already assembled, that's a, a stock housing or something, the thickness of that bearing retainer may be different. You know, there, there are some variables there. So since we're starting with a fresh housing, since we're starting with fresh axles, we're going to just take this bearing retainer off. Uh, you'll just look at your application and look at the length of your T-bolts and make that decision. But this piece in combination with this will be sufficient to press the bearing on and you'll see that when we assemble it, you'll kind of see what we're talking about. So we need to head over to the press and put it together. I believe so. Alright, we're back from the press. We've got our bearing retainer pressed on here. This plate comes with this brake kit. What it's meant to do is basically simulate the thickness of the backing plate. So you wanna make sure that that goes on first and then slide the axle in. There go. And then this'll sit there like so. And then you're ready for this bracket. And you wanna make sure that you orient this bracket so that the caliper is up into the rear and so that's gonna look like so. And you'll see how this will, as you tighten those T-bolts down, will we'll press that bearing in. And we're using some, some lock nuts and then uh, we're using flat washers here because these holes are, are slightly oblong so you wanna make sure that you use a washer. We're also using a, a locking nut and it may be wise in this situation to use some, uh, some Loctite as well. Uh, you know, like I mentioned before, this is not a, a bolt that you want to have come loose. And you'll basically go until it's snug on the end of the axle housing. Up to this point, this is basically gonna be the same for any nine inch housing with, with this bracket. We're getting to the part now where the universal nature of this kit comes out. And once you put the rotor on, you're gonna see with the offset what stack of spacers you're gonna to need to position the, the caliper. But one thing you're gonna encounter before you get to that point is the, the hole size on the rotor. And this is gonna be common of a lot of aftermarket brake kits. A four and a half Ford or Mopar pattern is quite often drilled out to half inch. But GM cars, the four and three quarter bolt pattern, used 7 16th studs more commonly. So you're gonna find that's a 7 16th hole. These studs, while they're 7 16th, they have a shoulder in them that is half inch and it's not gonna allow you to put the, the rotor on all the way. So the first thing you're gonna have to do is gonna to be to enlarge these holes. So now that Joe's got the, the wheel stud holes drilled out in the rotor, that will slip over them just fine. But one other thing that you run into once in a while with aftermarket parts, um, like this happens to be a, a Curry axle, um, this center register is just a little bit tight. So we're gonna have to open that up a little bit to get the rotor to slip on all the way. And, and that's gonna vary, you know, depending on whether you have an OE axle, whether you have a different aftermarket axle. We chose to make this on the tight side because you want it to be tight because you want it to index the rotor. Uh, you know, had we made it looser, you know, you would potentially have some slop and some issues there. So, uh, you know, just a few thousandths isn't a big deal. Uh, Maybe something that you encounter depending on your axle. So an important thing that you need to do before you put this all together is to clean the brake rotors. You know, when you get them in the box, they're in a bag and they've got some oil and stuff like that on them to keep them from rusting. Um, and so a good thing to do is to take them to a solvent tank and just rinse them off. 
and then uh, you can use brake clean and Joe's going to rinse them off here and then blow them off with air. And it's just kind of a best practice to not touch the friction surface or the brake pad if you can avoid it just to keep from getting oils from your fingers on it. So now that that's on, we can move on to the next step, which is to determine the, the offset of the caliper and what stack of spacers we're going to need. All right, our next move is to mock up the caliper on the caliper bracket, and then we're going to slide it over the rotor, and we're going to kind of take a measurement. Uh, your spacers will go between this bracket and this one, and that's what, uh, what determines the offset. So this just assembles on the slide bolts. We put the, the standoff side of the boss up against the caliper. There's kind of a lot to hold, so it helps to have a buddy. And then you want to make sure that you're centered, that this is roughly centered on the, the slide. And we get about 3 eighths on that. Once you have that, that spacing measured, in order to assemble it, you'll need to pull it all apart, pull the caliper back off the bracket, and pull the rotor off to enable you to get to the, the bolts and nuts to bolt the two halves of the bracket together. And then you'll reassemble it and, and check your, your spacing one more time. This would be another good place to use some Loctite too when you put it together right. for the last time. And because this is a sliding caliper, when you check this, you want to make sure that you kind of slide it in both directions and make sure that it Make sure that it's mostly centered. One thing you definitely want to do too when you put this together for the last time is put a little bit of caliper grease on these slide pins. Right. That way it allows that caliper to move back and forth freely without binding up at all. All right, and now that we're all installed, if you're using the non-emergency brake version of this kit, you're pretty much home free. You just bleed the caliper, make sure your bleeder points up, bleed the caliper as you would usually. With the emergency brake version, there's a little bit of a trick that we've learned the hard way. We thought that you could just bleed it like you would a normal caliper. It's not true. This emergency brake lever actually moves the piston in, and uh, if, you, if you don't do that, then you're just, you're just never going to get them bled. Right. So a lot of times you want to go ahead and hook your e-brake cable up and adjust it, uh, get the pad moved right up to the face of the rotor, and then you can start bleeding the air out of it. And you can see the piston come out if you look down in there. Uh, you know, just make sure that the piston is drawn out snug. And once you've done that, bleed the brakes and uh, you're on down the road. Yep. Um, you know, so there's a few tricks to installing this because it's a universal kit. It's meant to cover a lot of applications. But once you've got those handled, it's a really great kit. Well, thank you, Zach, and thanks to everybody for watching.